Hi, this video will talk about the practice exercise concerned on the division of radicals or radical expressions. Before, in the previous video, we were able to identify the processes and the concerns on how do we multiply radical expressions. We are going to talk now on the division of radical expressions, but please do not forget that division is also known as the reverse operation of multiplication. I'm going to share to you uh, practice exercise uh, B of uh, lesson number three, which is on multiplication and division of radicals. In the multiplication of radicals, there's only one important concern that we are going to, uh, to consider, uh, it is also the same thing with division of radicals. In the multiplication of radicals, again, we can only multiply radicals if we have the same indices. We, it doesn't matter what the radicands are. As long as they have the same indices, we can multiply them. As for the division of radicals, we are going to take that concept here. In short, we can only divide radicals or radical expressions with the same indices. If the radical expressions do not have the same index, we are going to manipulate or do a necessary uh, transformations on the radical expressions for the radical expressions to be uh, to have the same indices. We will talk about it on special example number six on this practice exercise here. But first, let's talk about number one, okay? In number one, we have here square root of two to be divided by square root of six. As we have all, we have all known, this, this symbol here, also known as the obelus, okay? this symbol here, also known as the obelus, may be transformed into a vinculum or a division bar thereby making this expression in a fractional form. So we can actually make it in this way, the square root of two all over square root of six. Okay. Because it's easier for us to look at this than the given expression, because here we can apply the division law of radicals. The division law of radicals tells us that if the indices of the numerator and denominator of the radical expressions are the same, we can just simply combine them into one, okay, or vice versa. Right? It it goes the 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 other way, okay. So from here to the from a single um, radical expression, they may be transformed into uh, into the radical expressions of the numerator and denominator, and the other way around. So we are going to combine them. So we'll have two divided by six. So this would become equivalent to the square root of two six, which is one third. Okay. We can still uh, write this in a simplified form, wherein we are going to reverse the operation here. So we are going to share the radical expression to, bo to both numerators and the denominator. So you have square root of one, all over square root of three. And we all know that square root of one is just one, and square root of three is just an irrational number. And this is our answer for number one. Spoiler alert. Yes, this is the correct answer as of this moment, but there is something that needs to be done for this expression because we, we, in mathematics, we do not necessarily allow a radical expression in the denominator. So we are going to rationalize this denominator, to which will be the concern of the next video or the next practice exercise. As of the moment, just for reference to the division of radicals, we are going to accept this answer as of this moment. But again, once practice exercise C or the topic on rationalizing denominators is already done, this is not any more acceptable. As of the moment, that's it. Okay, let's have number two. Number two, we have here the given. Again, let's make it in a fractional form already. Nine square root of 10 all over negative three square root of five. 
Same thing in the multiplication of radical expressions wherein we separately multiply the numerical coefficients or the coefficients outside the radical expression and then multiply the radical expressions, same as here. We can actually just simply divide this first. So we have negative nine divided by negative three is negative three and then combine the two radical expressions because they have the same indices into this. So definitely this will become negative three and then 10 divided by five is square root of two. Yeah, this is our, this is our answer for number two. Let's proceed to number three. Number three has variables now in the radicands, okay? but do not worry. Let's start this with making it as a rational expression or in a form of a fraction. 16 m cubed n to the power of 5 all over square root of 2 m n. Again, the first thing to consider is the indices. We have square root here, another square root. In short, we have the same indices. So we can just simply combine them into one radical expression. So you have square root of 16 m cubed n to the power of five all over two m n and use the laws of exponents as you combine the terms inside this radicand. So that's 16 divided by two. Again, we are still in square root. 16 divided by two is eight. m cubed divided by m is m squared. And then n to the power of five divided by n is actually n to the power of four. This is not yet the final answer because we can still further simplify this expression by Again, it can be rewritten as four times two. M squared is already a perfect square. N to the power of four is also a perfect square. So we can just simply move out the perfect squares. Let me drop down number four here. Okay. So we will have here the answer for number three as square root of four is two. Square root of M squared is just M. Square root of n to the power of 4 is just n squared. And we still have a value inside, which is only 2. Because this is the only item that is not a perfect square. It remains here. Let's proceed to number 4. Okay, Number 4, so you have your negative square root of 2a all over 4 square root of a squared. So again, we divide the coefficients outside the radical expressions, and then we combine the radical expressions. Take note that we actually have one here. So that's still negative one fourths. We cannot still, we cannot stay, we cannot simplify that. So we can just simply copy it here. So you have negative one, fourths and then you have your square root as you combine the, the denominator and the numerator into one radical expressions expression because they have the same indices so you have 2a all over a squared okay so since it's uh we have a and a squared here you may use your loss of exponents and then you will have negative one over four and then you have there square root of two to over a, okay, two over a, because that's a one minus two, that's negative one. Okay, let's say that, let's do it step by step. Two, a to the power of negative one. Okay, that's one minus two. So you have negative one over four, square root of two over a. And then let's return it to, uh, let's uh, let's share or distribute the square root here to both numerators and denominator. So you have negative, that's still one, square root of two over four square root of a. This is the answer for number four. Again, number one here is the one number one here doesn't need to be written because it automatically means one, negative one in this case. Same as number one, we're in, 
we have a radical expression in the denominator. Here, we also have a radical expression in the denominator. As of the moment, we shall accept this. But as soon as we will talk on rationalizing, there's still one thing need, that needs to be done here. Soon, next video. Number five. Number five is concerned now on the cube roots. So first, let's, uh, let us try to come up with a rational form or a fractional form. 32x cubed yz all over that we have two outside. Cube root of 2x squared y squared and we have z squared. Okay, so let us combine them into ran radical expression. Let me extend the space here. This becomes, again, we have here a value of 1. So that actually means we can write the coefficients outside as just simply 1 half because we have 2 in the denominator. And then you combine into 1 cube root. That's 32x cubed y z all over 2 that's just 2 x squared y squared and then z this is squared okay and then you have here one half cube root of 32 divided by 2 is 16 x cubed over x squared is just simply x y and y squared that's y negative 1 and z is that's z squared here and you have z to the power of negative 1 still okay let's apply the law of negative exponents you have one half then you have cube root of six that's um we may okay we would like to start with 16 first let's simplify 16 first before we apply the law of negative exponents cube root so 16 is 8 times 2 you have x y negative power of negative 1 z to the power of negative 1 let me continue it here okay so you have one half cube root of 8 is 2 times 2 then you have the cube root of 2 x y to the power of negative 1 z to the power of negative 1 Let's have number six later, probably here at the bottom. Okay. So this becomes, you can cancel this out already. No more, uh, we are leaving one in the, as the coefficient outside. No more fractional form outside. So this is equal to the cube root of two x y to the power of one, a negative one, I mean, and then z to the power of negative one. And then, this is where we will apply the law of negative exponents. So you have cube root of 2x over y, z. And then we can just simply distribute the uh, a share or distribute the index or the radical expression. So you will have cube root of 2x over cube root of y, z. Again, similar to numbers 1 numbers number n4 we have here a radical expression in the denominator so this will be taken by another this value will be taken by another uh, practice exercise as uh, another example let's have the last item number six number six now involves two different uh, two radical expressions with different indices so you have square root of that's two Square root of 2 over cube root of 4. Similar to multiplication of radical expressions, since division is just the, op the reverse operation of it, we cannot say the answer is 1 half because our cube root of 1 half or square root of 1 half, I don't know what you will be your guess here, but because we can't, we can't do that because we have the same different indices. You have 2 and 3. So what we will do is we could transform them into an expression with fractional exponents. So you have 2 to the power of 1 half all over 4 
to the power of one third. And then come up with a fractional exponents with the same denominator. That means we can convert them to six. So the numerator will become two to the power of, since we make it six, this is three, six, because three, six is just one half. All over four, the one third will become two, six. Then convert them again into a radical expression. This becomes sixth root of two cubed all over sixth root, that's sixth root, sorry, sixth root of four squared. Okay, and then take the values that sixth root of two cubed is eight over sixth root of four squared is 16, if I'm correct. Okay, so again, that they cannot combine them into one. The sixth root of eight over 16. And this becomes sixth root of one half. Share the, the, the root. So you have sixth root of one over sixth root of two. So we could actually get sixth root of one as one. And you have sixth root of two. So we have this as our final answer as of the moment, because we can still sim simplify it further using rationalizing the denominator soon. So the process in the division of radicals or radical expressions simply uses the division law of radicals. But of course, the rest of the laws will still be used, the product, the multiplication law or the product rule, the, um, what they call it, the, the considered transformation law or the concept between the fractional expressions with fractional exponents and the uh, radical expressions and vice versa. So again, we will talk about rationalizing in the next videos. But first, we, before we go to the rationalizing, review this video and use this video as you solve more problems so that you will mm, familiarize the steps in dividing radicals. Because when we reach rad, uh, rationalizing denominators, most of most uh, most of the time, the the issue on rationalizing denominators are consequences of division of radicals. As you can see in items one, uh, four, five, and six, as we divide radicals, we, we have radical expressions in the denominator, and as therefore, we will rationalize. Again, so before we will talk about rationalizing denominators, please make sure to familiarize the steps in dividing radical expressions. Thank you for watching. Uh, you may view this again, and you may use this as your future review. Thank you very much and have a nice day.